Amen. So, last week I started a series called, What is in a Name? I really highly encourage you to watch last week's message. Um, it's kind of a now message, poignant message. Today I'm calling the message, What's in a Name? Hyphen Jesus. Because today is Resurrection Sunday, the day we celebrate the raising of Christ from the dead. I would say the most holiest day of Christianity. Some may say Christmas is also, but Christmas was the birth of a child. And then that child grew to become our Savior, walked this earth for three years suffer all the abuse he did, died on a cross, but then rose again from the dead. So Jesus' resurrection from the dead solidified three key truths that I just want to highlight at the beginning this morning. And the first one is that he truly is God. Amen. He's God. Not a God, God. Himself, And in John 20, 27 through 29, this is in the voice translation, it says, He drew close to Thomas. Jesus reached out and touched, Jesus speaking, excuse me, reach out and touch me. See the punctures in my hands. Reach out your hand and put it to my side. Leave behind your faithlessness. And I think that's something the Lord wants us to grasp this morning also. Leave behind your faithlessness. Notice the next phrase, he says, and believe. Thomas, filled with emotions, he says, you are the one true God. You are the one true God and the Lord of my life. It's another point I want us to reflect on this morning. Will you make him Lord of your life? Will you receive him if you haven't? And make him Lord, not Savior, Lord. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is your Lord. And in modern day vernacular, that means he gets to tell you what to do and you don't get to say no. Amen. That's what Lord means. He's the boss. You do what he tells you to do because he says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do the things I ask you to do? So obedience, servanthood goes with making him Lord. See, if you, don't, if you still live life doing your own thing, you didn't make him Lord. Jesus says back to Thomas, Thomas, you have faith because you've seen me. The Bible says we don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. He says, Thomas, you've seen me. Blessed are all those who never see me, yet still believe. I've never seen him. I've never seen him in the flesh. I've perceived him. I perceived him here a couple times and... You know, especially on those Friday nights, I told you once a month we sit aside to just come and worship and honor him and praise him. But I never saw him like Thomas did. But he said, you know what? Those who still believe are blessed. Why? Because we're not faithless. So the first thing I want to remind you is the resurrection proves that he is God. Not only that, he has the power now over death, hell, and the grave. He has the power over death, hell, and the grave. 1 Corinthians 15, 56 and 57 in the voice translation says this, sin came into the world and death's sting followed. Then sin took aim at the law and gained power over those who follow the law. Thank God then for our Lord Jesus, the anointed and liberating King who brought us victory over the grave. It also says in Revelation 1.18, in the voice translation also, I am the living one. I entered the realm of the dead. 
but see, I am alive now and for all the ages, even ages to come. Amen. Then he says, I possess the keys to open the prison of death and Hades. See, there's no more sting of death. Oh, death, where's your sting? Oh, grave, where's your victory? It's gone. He literally went into hell on that quiet Saturday and blew hell apart the next morning, shattered it, destroyed it. Third thing I want to remind you of, and, and this is nothing that's, that's new, honestly, but just to remind you, is he will return to set up his eternal kingdom. He will return and set up his eternal kingdom. Revelation 11, 15, and 16, there's a New Living Translation, says this, Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there was a loud voice shouting in heaven, the world has now become the kingdom of our Lord and his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. The 24 elders sitting on their thrones before God fell on their faces, faces to the ground, and worshiped him. He will set up his kingdom forever and ever. See, what people are looking for today, and we need to be careful, people are looking for justice today. People are looking for things to get set right today. But the truth of the matter is, this is all going to get destroyed and burned up. And there will be a new heaven and a new earth where he will reign forever and ever. And he will be the king of kings and lord of lords. The question now becomes, what part of that kingdom Occupy is not the word. Will you have a function in? I think we forget that this is the training ground for eternity. We put so much stock into this life and this realm and so much focus in it, understanding this is but a vapor. And it's going to disappear very shortly. And each birthday I have, like last Sunday, and my brother Richard this Saturday, we figure out how much more of a vapor it is. That it's getting shorter and shorter. This is not what life's about. This is not what anything is about. This is the training ground. This is the, if you want to use the analogy of the parables, look at I've given you these talents. What have you done with them? In this time I gave you now, to use them for my honor and glory. What have you done with them? Because one day we're going to have an accounting. And please don't be like the dude that had the one talent and said, I knew you were a harsh, harsh taskmaster. So I just hid it and did nothing. See, that's sad because he had a perverted view of his God. Do you understand the world is trying to pervert the view of God? That's why it's so important to get into the book for yourself and say, God, reveal who you are to me. I need to know you for myself because my walk is with you. My relationship, so to speak, is with you. What does that look like? That I may walk it out, that I may be that epistle read by all men, that I may always reflect your glory, that as others see me, they see you. That's the goal of this. This is why Jesus was amazed with the Pharisees. No, it wasn't the Pharisees. I think it was Philip. Well, you guys can correct me, you Bible scholars. But he says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. What part are you missing? That's what we ought to strive to be. Look at if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Why? Because I'm a son. And we are to reflect the image of the family we're in, or the name we have been given. But note, there's another very important factor of the resurrection, one that is really relevant for today. And it's connected to the Great Commission. So in Mark 
chapter 16, 17, and 18. This is out of God's Word translation. It says this. These are the miraculous signs that will accompany believers. Or as I got in parentheses there, those who believe. That's another translation. These signs will accompany those who believe. So guess what? The other side of the equation is if you don't believe, these won't accompany you. He says this, they will use the power and authority of my name. I got my name in all caps. Because we're going to get back to names a little bit again. And if you didn't watch last week's message, it might be a little bit confusing. I'm going to just touch on a few points as we go to kind of bring you up to speed a little bit. He says, in my name, to force demons out of people. They will speak with new languages. Verse 18, they will pick up snakes, and if they drink anything, any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will place their hands on the sick and cure them. So last week I shared with you the spiritual principle of naming. This powerful principle revolves around the premise that what you name, you have influence and control over. This is why Adam had dominion over the creatures of the earth was because he named them. Adam named his wife Eve, the mother of all living, because she was his helper to fulfill God's commandment to replenish the earth. I also shared with you how those who have passed away still have influence in your life because they named you. Remember you still have something Auntie so-and-so gave you 30 years ago and you refused to throw it away because Auntie so-and-so gave it to you? Like Auntie so-and-so is going to care? See, influence through the name and lastly, I shared with you the devilish scheme the enemy has been using. Our enemy knows well this spiritual principle of naming. That is why we see society, <clears throat> that's why we see in society a major renaming campaign going on. And last week I used these two examples. Illegal aliens are renamed as undocumented people. See, we're going to rename because name carries influence and control. Why not just call it first? There you go. Believe is a renamed Christian nationalist. We're going to rename, or the word I also used last week was rebrand, for the purpose of exerting control and influence over what we name. See, and this one's amazing to me. Abortion is renamed as women's health care. So it exerts influence over women because we renamed it. And how many people have bought into that? Through the influence and control of renaming that for years. Now what's an unbelievable one today? It couldn't have got dropped into my lap any more easily to back this point up. Do you know what the occupant of the White House renamed today? Transgender Identity Day. He put out a decree yesterday, a proclamation from the White House, renaming Christianity's Most Holy Day as Transgender Identification Day or Identity Day or whatever he's called it. And also has banned any type of religious symb symbols and everything at the Easter egg roll at the White House today. Are we getting what's going on? Renaming has a spiritual principle behind it because if I can name it, I can influence and control it. Now please understand, I hope you understand, the person in the White House is not cognitively stable enough to even understand what he did. There's other influences behind him. 
Because I don't think he fully understands what he did to alienate every person of faith in this country by renaming today the most holiest day in Christendom to actually put out a proclamation, not just make a statement, to put out a proclamation. Why would he name it that day? Do you understand God created man how? In his own image. What does transgenderism do? Destroys the image of God. Please think a minute. Just, just think. Why would that specific name be used? Why wouldn't it call it something else? Because there is an attempt to destroy the image of God in humanity. The devil has sought to do that through his own whole reign. We're going to kill them. We're going to dismember them. We're going to disfigure them and deform them because man is the glory of God. Man is God's glory, his height of achievement. And we will be put on display for all eternity, for every power and principality to look at for eternity. God wants to glorify himself through mankind. That's why he sent Jesus to die and raise from the dead to prove he is God and to redeem his people back. And all who will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And there is a concerted effort to destroy that. And it is becoming more blatant every day. And part of the concern is the ignorance of believers when it comes to naming things. That's what's occurred. I wouldn't say I'm stunned and shocked. I am saddened that we are rapidly moving to the end of the timeline so quickly now to literally have the most powerful person in the world do that and have no clue and again it wasn't him the system behind him have no clue what they actually just did It's sad. And I want to get to the place where I can say, Father, forgive him because he does not know what he has done. To literally give God the middle finger, so to speak, on the most holy day. Say, no, 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 I'm renaming it. That's a scary thing. So I want to look at Mark 16 that we just read earlier and answer this question, what is in the name of Jesus? But first I want to look at this principle of renaming as it pertains to Jesus because last week I talked about how it pertains to us. But how did it pertain to Jesus? Who actually named Jesus? I don't know if you've ever done a little study on that or a little research on that. But first off, he had an earthly, natural name, correct? Who actually named him? And it says in Matthew 1, 21, this is in the name, Names of God Bible, it says, she will give birth to a son. Now this is the angel talking to Joseph in the dream. And she will give birth to a son, and you will name him Yeshua. He saves. The Lord is salvation. The Greek form of the Hebrew, Joshua which means Savior, because he will save his people from their sins. Do you understand the name Yeshua, Joshua, however you want to put it, was a common name back then. There wasn't a special name for Jesus. It was very common. Just like me growing up, Jim, 
They, there were common names in certain errors that you can see, you know, that people had. Robin was a common name. Elizabeth, Sally, Joe, all common names. John. Jesus had a common name. So again, who named him? The angels talking to Joseph. In verse, in Matthew 1, 24 and 26, through 25, excuse me, the New Life Version says this, Joseph woke up from his sleep. He did what the angel of the Lord told him to do. He took Mary as his wife, but he did not have her as a husband has a wife until she gave birth to a son. And then catch this, Joseph gave him the name Jesus. Joseph gave him the name. Just like gave the name to my daughter. You gave names to your children. Joseph gave him the name. Back then, when I looked through scripture, it seems that the father names the son. Or the father did the naming. We saw the same with Zechariah in the temple, right? The angel told, went to him and says, you're going to call him John. And they were shocked when he came out. There's no John in the family. You can look up Jewish tradition and see how some of this went, if you want to go that deep. So Joseph gave him his earthly name. I'm going somewhere with this, so hang in there. Now, did that earthly name have any influence? Like I said, remember, uh, what you name, you have influence and control over. You know that if you're a parent, you have influence and control over your kids. Maybe not as much as you'd like when they're little, but you do. But notice this, was there any in earthly influence through that name? Now notice in John 2, 1 through 5, this is in the message translation, it says this. Three days later, there was a wedding in the village of Canaan in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. Jesus and his disciples were guests also. When they started running low on wine at the wedding banquet, Jesus' mother told him they're just about to run out of wine. Verse 4, Jesus said, is that any of our business, mother? Yours or mine? Is that our problem? Is that our business? Is that our worry? They're about to run out of wine. But notice what else he says. This isn't my time. Don't push me. Guess what Ma did? She pushed them. To the point that it says she went ahead anyway. <laughs> Telling the servants, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And guess what ended up happening? Ma got her way. Why? Ma had influence over her son. Why? Because they named him. Got to catch this point. Naming is a powerful spiritual principle that I don't think we know enough about and we need to understand it because again, that will help us to truly grasp the spirit that's going on in the world today with renaming things and how we can do spiritual warfare against those things. But like I said last week, you just don't have an earthly name, you have a heavenly name. Remember that old hymn, there's a new name written down in glory? And it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. There's a new name. So not only do you have an earthly name that was given to you by your earthly parents, you become born again. Now you're born into a new family. And guess what? You got a new name. That's part of what this was all about. Remember these back in the day? I will give you a white stone and do what with it? Put on a new name. Remember I said names have to do with identity, purpose, and destiny. Who named Jesus spiritually? In Isaiah 4, 7, 14, the Names of God Bible, it says, So Adonai himself will give you this sign. A virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and she shall name him Emmanuel. God is with us. 
who gave him his heavenly name, Adonai himself. He said, I'm going to give you a sign, and I'm going to tell you who he is. See, down here, down there, he's named Jesus. Down there, he's named Yeshua, Joshua. And with that name carries out a purpose because that means the Lord saves. He saves. Savior. There was a meaning behind his name. But he says, you know what? He's got another name too. And it's called God is with us. He is God. So was there any heavenly influence because of that name? Most certainly in John 5, 19. And I'm sharing these with you to make you, help you to understand that what you name, you have influence over. Or what somebody else names, they have influence over. John 15, 19 in the New Living Translation says this, So Jesus explained, I tell you the truth, the Son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the Father doing. Whatever the Father does, the Son does. Why? Because he named me and he has influence over me. In John 5, verse 30, same translation says this, I can do nothing on my own. I judge as God tells me. Another version says this, that I have there in parentheses, as I hear, I judge. Therefore, my judgment is just because I carry out the will of the one who sent me, not my own will. So notice how Jesus was able to do the things he said as he walked. How was he able to do the things as he walked upon the earth? This is a question we absolutely need to grasp the answer to. How was he able to do that? Because a lot of the times we struggle with this verse I'm about to share with you. In John 14, 12 through 13, it says this, I guarantee this truth. Jesus said, I guarantee this truth. Those who believe in me will do the things that I am doing. Are you doing the things that he did? I'll help you with that. No. No. Some of us not even close. No. But he said, look, this is a guaranteed truth. This isn't in a maybe. This isn't in a special anointing. This isn't in a special empowerment. He said, I guarantee this truth. Those who believe in me. Well, all of us, if I were to say, do you believe Jesus? Yes. Is he your Lord? Did he raise from the dead today? Have you believed in your heart that God raised him from the dead? I bet you everyone in this room would say yes. So that would constitute this, what he's saying. Then why aren't we doing what he did? We need to come up with that answer. So they will do even greater things because I'm going to the, my father. Hey, the heck with just doing what I did. You're going to outshine me because I'm going there. I'm going to be with my father. Verse 13, I will do anything you ask the father in my name. Folk, we got to grasp the spiritual implication of names. There's a powerful spiritual principle behind names. So that the Father will be given glory because of the Son. Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, I'll do it for you. Another translation says, you said I've asked and it ain't happened. Would you like to know where the disconnect is? We're going to get there in a minute. So here's another principle I touched on last week. Your name, or who named you, is connected to your identity, purpose for living, and your destiny. Jesus derived his identity from his name. He saves, Savior. Every time someone used a call of the name Jesus, it reminded him of his identity, purpose, and destiny. 
See, believers walk around don't even know what they're supposed to be doing. Don't even know. And what we do, and I shared this last week, so I'll just touch on it a little bit, we connect to the destiny of our parents. Like I said, I'm a junior. I am identified with my father by name exactly. And within a family, a family usually has a lineage where people in the family do similar things. Might not do the exact vocation, but they're similar in nation, in nature. And that's what we naturally gravitate to because we've been named. A name comes with identity and purpose and destiny, built right in. So Jesus, every time the name Jesus was spoken and he heard it, he saves. He's a deliverer. He saves. The Lord saves. See, in Luke 1, 34 and 35, it says this. But, excuse me, not only that, he also identified with his name his father gave him in Isaiah 7, 14. And like I said last week, you might not know specifically your spiritual name, but that doesn't matter because it comes with an identity, a purpose, and a destiny built in. Jesus knew that. So in Luke 1, 34 and 35, it says, Mary said to the angel, how will this happen? I have never had a man. The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit who comes upon you, the power of the Most High, will cover you. The holy child you give birth to will be called the Son of God. He'll be called the Son of God. God with us. In Philippians 2, 5 through 7, New Century Version says this, In your lives, now catch this, please. In your lives, you must think and act like Christ Jesus. We are expected to act, act and think like Christ Jesus. It says Jesus himself was like God in every way, but he did not think that being equal with God was something to be used for his advantage. He gave up his place with God and made himself nothing. He was born as a man and became like a servant. So he was born as a man. He gave up his deity, we understand, but he was still fully God and fully man. So how did he function that way? He functioned that way because he understood what his identity was through his name on earth, and he understood what his identity was as God. See, the biggest thing the devil wants to mess with you is, who am I? I don't know who I am. He messes with identity because he understands identity brings purpose and destiny, and people have been wandering around not knowing what the heck they're supposed to be doing their whole life. Now catch this the best you can. Why did Elohim create man? He wanted a family. What was Adam's purpose? To replenish the earth so God could have a family, which was called humanity. Adam failed to fulfill his purpose. Jesus became the second Adam in order to fulfill Elohim's original intent. This is found in the name Jesus, Savior. The way has now been paved, so to speak, for all who will confess Jesus as Lord and believe in their heart that God raised them from the dead, they will be saved and become part of God's family. Jesus fulfilled the way. That's why he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I've provided the way to become part of God's family because that was God's original intent he created humanity because he wanted a family. So how was Jesus able to fulfill his purpose? He drew upon his spiritual identity, the name Emmanuel, God with us. 
Catch this, he identifies with his spiritual name, which gave him authority and power to fulfill the purpose and destiny of his earthly name. Thus he became and functioned as the God-man, fully God and fully man. We never once think about our heavenly name. We never once think about our heavenly identity. We try to walk through this world as Jim Gazofsky, trying to pull on Jesus' name, thinking that's what's going to accomplish what needs to be accomplished in life. Jesus didn't do that. He knew he was Savior. He also knew he was God because he drew his identity from the names he was given. Is this making sense? This is so important. See, Proverbs 23, 7 in the Amplified says at the beginning part, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Now, this is why I took the Amplified part. In behavior, one who manipulates. Now, we understand the rest of that proverb was negative. But as you think in your heart, that controls your behavior. So if you think according to your earthly name and the earthly influences that have been put upon you, that is how you're going to behave. If you have been identified as worthless, that's how you're going to behave. If you've been identified as nothing but scum, that's how you're going to behave. Because you've been named that. This is so critical to grasp. You've allowed people with influence who named you to continue to speak over you and you continue to behave as they told you even though they've been dead for 20 years. Because what you name you have control over. And understand anyone that was ever born into this world never dies. They just simply change location in the spirit realm. They ain't dead, that's why they still have control. Because it's a spiritual principle. And it blows my mind because people can say, yes, I was named this and I was called this my whole life. I know that. I know that's what's my problem. Then why are you still allowing those influences to control your life? Why? You know why? Because you're not identifying with your heavenly name. You're not identifying with who God calls you. You're only identifying with your, your earthly name and allowing that to continue to influence you. But yet I'm born again. I believe I'm going to heaven when I die. You're the one person one talented person that's buried it and you don't understand because of the influences that have gone on that is why renaming is such a devilish scheme because it all boils down to who you're going to believe you know that song whose report will I believe I'll re Believe the report of the Lord comes out of Isaiah, right? Whose report do you believe in? You're still believing people from the dead, the lineage that you carried because of your name. You know why? Because you can look at behavior and there it is. What does this revelation mean for us? How are we to do what Jesus did and fulfill our earthly purpose and destiny by understanding the same principle we see here. We were sent here by God for a purpose. Our purpose has been marred by sin and influenced by being named. Once we become born again, we have become a new creation, a fresh start. With a fresh start. 2 Corinthians 5 16 through 18, this is the Names of God Bible, says this, So from now on, we do not think of anyone from a human point of view. Stop thinking about people from a human point of view. Stop thinking about yourself from a human point of view. If we did think of Christ from a human point of view, we don't anymore. 
Don't even think of him as a man walking on the earth. We look at him as an example of what is possible for humanity to be able to achieve. But how did he achieve it? Because he identified with his heavenly identity. He was God. You are a son of God. You need to identify with that identity. It goes on in verse 17. Whoever is a believer in Christ is a new creation. The old way of living has disappeared. Not for many people today. They still live like they did before they were saved. Still struggle with the same things. Still fight over the same issues. But I'm born again. How can you be? It just said... The, the old ways have disappeared. If the old ways haven't disappeared, what's the problem? Are you truly born again? Did you truly become a new creation? Or did you say that magic prayer and think you were all set? I don't know. I'm not here to tell you why. But it's something we have to go through this self-evaluation process to say, okay, God, what's up? And I'm trying to tell you, this is another possible issue in people's lives. You are still identifying with your earthly name. My family has always done this, so I guess that's why I do it. My family was always poor, I guess that's why I'm poor. My family was always full of drunks, I guess that's why I'm a drunk. Or whatever. You're still identifying with your earthly name, heritage and destiny that comes along with that name. I told you last week, either my great-grandfather or great-great-great-grandfather changed our name because he didn't want to be identified with the heritage. That's why when people get adopted, they change their name. They drop the old and become new. This is what this is saying. Drop the old. You've become a new creation in Christ. The old way of living has disappeared and a new way of living has come into existence. God has done all this. He has restored our relationship with Him through Christ. Now catch this. You want to know what your purpose is? It's right here. And has given us the ministry of restoring relationships, bringing others to Christ. We have a new earthly identity, purpose, and destiny that needs to be the driving force in our life. That's what this day represents. That's what this day brings. Through Mark 16, verse 17. Now how can we carry out and fulfill our new destiny, identity, purpose, and destiny? Where do we get the power and authority as Jesus did to do so? We identify with our new spiritual name so that we may use the name which is above every other name. See, my heavenly name is not God. My heavenly name is not God with us. I don't know what my heavenly name is, but what it allows me to do is use the name that is above every other name so that every knee must bow to that name. I am now able to do it because I identify with my heavenly identity and because of that through Jesus, I can use his name. That's why he said, you can do more than I did. And anything you ask the Father, I will do that he may be glorified. Not glorified by me, glorified by Jesus because I'm walking in his name. This is the power of names that we got to grasp. Philippians 2, 9 and 10. The names of God, Bible says this, this is why God has given him an exceptional honor. The name, honored above all other names. So that the name of Yeshua, everything in heaven, on earth, and in the world below will kneel. Know why it doesn't kneel when you use the name? Think a minute. Spit it out if it's, it's happening in your head. If you're getting it, spit it out. Do you know why when you use the name, nothing happens? Because there's no power in the name when Jim Gazofsky is using it. 
When I am identifying with my earthly name, when I am identifying with my earthly heritage, there is nothing there. I'm like the sons of Sceva. They're going to look at me and say, Paul I know, and Jesus I know. Who the heck are you? That's why nothing happens, because we continue to identify with our earthly name, our earthly purpose, our earthly heritage, our earthly lineage. In fact, we brag about all the traditions we hold and don't understand they're hindering us from walking out our divine destiny, because we won't identify with our new name and our new purpose and our new destiny. See, Ephesians 1, 20 and 22, same version says this, He worked with the same power in Christ when He brought Him back to life and gave Him the highest position in heaven. He is far above all rulers, authorities, powers, Lord, and all other names that can be named. Why is it using names? Because names carry weight, power, and authority. Jim Gazowski carries no weight, power, or authority in the spirit realm. And neither do you. Because we're made of the dust and we're going to return to dust. The authority comes when we become born again. That's why Jesus said, all power and authority has been given to me, so you go. I have it now. You got nothing. You go. How? In my name. You'll cast out demons. You'll lay hands on the sick. You'll speak with new tongues. You pick up anything deadly, it will not harm you. You go in my name, and when you use my name, I will do whatever you ask me to do. I will personally go to the Father and get it done for you because you're using my name because my name is above every name. Do you understand why they're trying to rename this day? Because there's power in names. Not only in this present world, he said, but in the world to come. In the world to come. It's not even here yet, and his name is above every name in that realm. God has put everything under the control of Christ. He has made Christ the head of everything. Why? What's the rest of the verse say? For the good of the church. For the good of the church. He has put everything under Christ's control for the good of the church. That's why Jesus gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, that we all may come into the unity of the body. But no, we're all running around under our own earthly name, identity, and influence, and just mucking up the whole thing. Because we don't understand there's a new name written down in glory he wants us to identify with. That's what Jesus did. That's how he could accomplish what he did upon the earth. So let me ask you this morning as we go. One, are you born again? And if not, why not? I want to encourage you to make that decision today. Know that you know that you know that if you were to die, you'd go to heaven. You're going to die. It's just where you're going to end up. There's only two places. Secondly, are you identifying with your new name? Are you taking on your new identity purpose so that you may fulfill your destiny? Because as you think, you will behave. So just look at your behavior. Look at your attitude. Look what you think about. Look what you talk about. That ought to show you which identity are you identifying with. Are you identifying with the earthly identity or the heavenly identity? And then lastly, 
Do you believe in the name of Jesus, Yeshua? Do you believe that it is above every other name that has been named? Do you believe it's above the name they put on you, cancer? Do they believe it's above the name they put on you, whatever? It's a name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every other name has to bow. Do you understand the importance of using the name? It's not a little tag on we put on the end of a prayer or whatever. There's power in the name. And there's only power in the name when you are identifying with your heavenly position and your new name because it's only through your new name you get to use the name. The sons of Sceva were not walking with that identity. That's why they got their butts whipped. And that's why Christianity today has been getting its butt whipped. You're not identifying with the proper name to use the name above every other name. This is what today is all about. Do you believe by that name you can do what Jesus did? Do you believe when you call upon his name, he will do what you ask? Let me give you a verse just to depart with, to meditate upon as we go this morning. In Matthew 19, 26, in the New Life Version, it says this. Jesus looked at them and said, This can't be done by men, but with God, all things can be done. The way we know this version says, But with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. And you keep saying to yourself, why didn't it happen? I just explained it to you. I hope you caught it. You walking in your earthly name, your earthly identity, your earthly purpose, and earthly destiny that you've planned out for yourself, you can't walk under that identity and just say Jesus and expect him to come running. Because you are a new creation in Christ. He's saying, where is the new creation? So you're over here wanting to handle all your own problems and deal with your, all your own situations. You don't cast. You let them worry you. You let them drive you and your behavior. That's what he's just saying to me again. The biggest tell is what is your behavior? I'm not saying you act religious because that's what we've turned our earthly identity into, some religious hybrid. Do you understand that's what a re transgender is, as a human hybrid? It's not even normal to have male and female parts and all kinds of stuff all on one being. That's not normal. It's not normal for a Christian to walk around as a religious hybrid. To still walk under their earthly identity, their name, and just sprinkle religious stuff on it, thinking God's supposed to hear them and answer them and do all this. No. That's why Jesus can look at people in the end and say, depart from me, I never knew you. He doesn't know that person. He doesn't know Jim Gazowski. He knows this person with the new name written on the white rock because he's the one who said, Lord, forgive me, I'm a sinner. Welcome me into your family. And I came into a new family with a new relationship and everything new because I became a new creation in Christ. That dude died. That dude was supposed to die. But the problem is we keep having resurrections of the old man with its thinking and behavior. Stop acting like the sons of Sceva. You're getting your butt whipped. They had no right to use the name of Jesus. And they found out. The devils let them know they had no authority and power because all authority and all power is in the name of Jesus. When you are walking and identifying with your new name. 
And when you do that, and understand your purpose now is to do the same thing Jesus did. Not die on the cross, not raise from the dead, but use his name to reconcile others into the body. To bring others into the family. Because he's given us all the ministry of reconciliation. That's our overall purpose. Now you have a specific destiny in walking that out. So please understand what gets named, the person that named it influenced. That's why there is a major renaming and rebranding campaign in society today. It's a spiritual principle. But to bring it down where the rubber meets the road for us, what do we need to walk out with? We need to walk out thinking, what identity, what name am I operating under? What name am I operating under? And if you want to know, look at your behavior. And you'll know what name you're operating under. I want to operate under the new name that I can see those things happening, that I can see others being reconciled unto Jesus. Because that's what he did for me. And that's what somebody else did for me. Like I said, you go back and remember when you became born again, there was somebody influencing you towards heaven. God will always use a person to do that. To give a word, to give a kind gesture, or just as the scripture says, give a glass of water. You don't know what those things will do. And the only way you can do that is function with your new identity. The only way you'll ever be able to say, Father, forgive him, Mr. Biden, because he does not know what he's doing, is when you function under that identity. And you know what the struggle is? Because he's telling me this now. Let's wrap it up, angel. The struggle we have is because we have this sense of justice that we want to see justice happen to those who have done wrong. You've got to get rid of that because vengeance is mine, says the Lord. He will repay. You may never see the repayment. And that might be a good thing because if you gloried in the repayment, wow, that's not cool to wish harm and hurt and judgment on somebody else's life when we walk in mercy and grace and forgiveness daily. Amen. Great, thank you. Now he said shut up. Lord, we honor you and worship you and praise you on this most holy day. Lord, we can't do what the world is doing, but Lord, in our own hearts, we will not allow this day to be renamed. This is Resurrection Sunday. This is the day we celebrate our Lord rising from the dead, proving that he is God, proving that his name is above every other name. And I thank you that you said all those who believe may use that name. That we may use it to cast out devils. We may use it to heal the sick. We may use it to do what Jesus did, not to show that we're anything, but to show that you are everything, Jesus. It is only because of you we can even stand here and have breath in our lungs because without you, nothing even exists. Because everything is contained within you, God. Lord, forgive those who do not know what they do. Forgive Mr. Biden, for he did not know what he did by renaming the day. Lord, I thank you that we can truly think and act like Jesus did when he said on the cross, forgive them because they do not know what they do. Lord, help us to have that goal Help us to have that kind of heart that we just function out of the love of God and we see past all the earthly junk 
that we identify with our heavenly being and see the eternal consequences. And may we be moved and motivated by those things as we look at others. May we have pity and hurt for those that are on the highway to hell, so to speak. Not judgment and condemnation. For that's not you. For you so loved the world that you gave. Lord, reinstill that love. Not just personally, but the love of God for others. That we can see them as you see them. And the only way we can do that is identify with the new name. To identify with the new creation you made us. And then we know we don't have to argue and fight, but we can fight right. We can spiritually wage war in the heavenly over these things. That your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, Jesus said, your will be done. Your will was done in his life on earth as it was already deemed in heaven. Before the foundations of the earth. Lord, may that be the case with each one of us. The purpose and a destiny that you sent us here to accomplish. May it be accomplished so at the end, which is coming so fast, we may all hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Because today we understood names. Today we understood the power that has them, the influence that is in them. And we have identified with our new name, with our new creation, because of this day. If this day never happened, that never would have happened. So Lord, we worship you, honor and praise you. God, I thank you that you sent Jesus to die in our place so you, you could redeem your family back under yourself. Help us to be busy in the ministry of reconciliation. Lord, we worship you, praise you, and honor you. May we continue to dwell upon you throughout this day. And we praise you now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord.